Thanks, Kevin. Okay, a main area of focus for us is going to be our transitioning from a defensive position to the attack. And it's going to be key that we're all on the same page as to how to transition as quickly as possible, give ourselves appropriate support positions, and to get forward as quickly as possible. So here what I'd like you to focus on is when we actually do win the ball, where are we in order to be able to build from there? And you can see we're about to win the ball here. And if we look at our positions right here, this is what we need to focus on. We won the ball, played it wide, we're in a good support position here. Now let's look at our central midfielders and figure out how many of them are actually open to receive a ball from this player. Right now when we look at it, none of them are. So none of them are an option. The only option is actually this flank player who's also not completely on the line, which I would like to see through a few steps over towards the line. But you three guys in the middle need to realize that this is one of your central roles. So when the ball comes over here, we cannot be on the same line heading north and south, and we also can't be on the same line east and west as these two players are. So what we'd like to see is when the ball comes over here, can we on the one touch have this person moving into this space here, essentially where the referee is, just being in front of the referee. Now, this midfielder, need not be worried about this space here because we have plenty of people in that position. This midfielder needs to be worried about our ability to switch the field. So if our first central midfielder is here, our second central midfielder could actually be more over here on the back side of the circle. That third central midfielder might want to be a little bit more towards the center circle so he's not crowding the space of the wide midfielder. Now with those positions, we could have the option of playing over to the top central midfielder, more about right here. We could quickly play the one touch from here to right there. And if we play that ball, this defender will probably step on it, then giving us the outlet to the third central midfielder who will be able, be able to attack into this space. So just the positioning from our starting positions, if that improves, it will make it so we're not forcing the ball up one side or into a pressured situation. So let's see how this worked out for us. Ball comes up. Somehow magically they give it back to us. Now this ball is the problem that we run into. Now when we look at this, where he started his run was already in the middle of the field. So if he had started the run over here, this ball could have been put out wide a bit more for him to be on to the goal. We're already pinched in so much that there's not an option because we have to play it over the top. If the starting position of this player is now out here when Zach gets the ball, now that pass could be into this space and he's 1v1 going towards goal. Else, what could happen is this midfielder could make a run right into this space here. So if we think of this picture, with this midfielder coming out, this defender gets drawn out. So now if this midfielder goes into advance, we have one, two players against two center backs. These should be two of our more talented attacking players. So now we're 1v1 over this side, 2v2 right over here. So if this player gets into the space here that is now wide open since our player has moved the defender out there, Zach were to play the ball into the space here, now these defenders have to make a commitment to stopping this ball. He continues the run, because now they will need the two defenders to stop the ball that comes here 
Zach continues his run here. We could slot him back through. We have the wide midfielder, who if he doesn't stay with, we can slot the ball through. Or if they don't stop the dribble penetration, we're going straight to goal. So just a little bit different movement, and we could get vastly different results from this than what we were able to see. Now oftentimes, we have a great separation between our midfield and attack, and this is one of these examples. We win the ball, we play it forward, and there's a good 20 yards between our forward and anyone in the midfield. We're gonna have to figure out how to bridge this space. So this needs to be something where, as this ball is going up, kind of like a fast break in basketball, a player or two is gonna have to see when we're moving our leg backwards to play that ball, so from before the kick actually happens, that that is happening, and to get on their horses and get into that space. The other thing I want us recognizing is, we have no support in this space at all again. And that's something we'll see consistently through this video, that when we're transitioning to attack, we need to fill the lanes, make sure we do have left, right, and center attack all the time. Now immediately when we know we're going to win the ball, let's think of how we can possess. Okay, we have two people go up for the same ball. Thankfully we win it. Now, it looks to me like we have this option right here. And I know we're under pressure and we're contesting it, so it's tough to think about that. But if we're in these positions regularly for each other, it's something that I hope all of us can trust will be there every single time. The difference between playing the ball out to this wide guy and now us building versus what happened is pretty dramatic because now they're on their attack and they get a shot opportunity. What are our options? Look at this and try to figure out where else could we go. Keep your eyes on that look here for a bit. Took three touches, probably two seconds to three seconds on the ball. Now if we count the numbers, we have one, two, three, four, five defenders right there against two attacking players for us. Those numbers are tough. Let's see how it works out. Okay, so that's a basic thing of when we're looking to build from the back, count the numbers. If we're numbers down in that situation, there has to be space where we're numbers up. And that's what we always need to be thinking wherever we are on the field. If they have more numbers than us, we have to move the point of attack to find the space where we have superior numbers. We keep on forcing it up that flank where they have numbers. So to the point we just spoke about, can we transition this? We've won the ball. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 touches before we get it out of the same 10 yard space for which we started with possession. That needs to change. When we win it in a certain area, which was right here, we need to realize it's got to be one or two passes before we're moving this point. That point could be here, that point could be here, 
but it needs to be out of this space here. That's way too many five yard passes and way too many touches on every single player in that situation. Automatically, we win it. We look to change the point of attack. If we're not facing a place we can, we play a one touch pass to somebody who can see it and then they move into a space or they're standing in that space already where they can open up the defense of the other team. So we did get it back, thankfully. Now we're looking to switch it. I like that. Add a little bit of pace to the ball and it'll be perfect. We open it up a bit more. Again, less touches, more pace to the ball. If we play more pace across, this guy is now over here when he receives it, as opposed to over here where he is. Now we have them opened up a bit. Play it back. Ay ay ay. To a one versus two, really one versus three situation. And he is 25 yards from anybody else right now. So we take our 14 touches back here. We get control of the ball. We spread the field wide. And then we give it to them. We need to value this ball better. We need to keep a hold of it and making sure we're moving that point of attack so we can possess the ball more, make their defense run more, and not play defense ourselves so much. We win the ball, simple pass, one, two, three, four, versus one. We lose it, and they're behind us. Of that last play, one thing you have to think about is when we play into a four versus one situation, they're also going to be in better support positions when they win the ball to attack, which they were. So it's not just us giving away the ball, but it's giving it away in a situation in which those players are now numerically disadvantaged and the other team is set up to counterattack wonderfully just as that team did against us. So we get the ball out wide. Now let's look at his options. We have one midfielder who's trying to make himself available. One who seems to be relaxing a little bit over here. That's about it right now. So I'm wondering what's happening over here. I'm wondering why we don't have another midfielder coming into a space up here. Maybe this guy coming back into that space and where the third midfielder would be as well. So let's see how it plays out. We force it up the flank, gets it back to him. Now if we look at the setup, now here's our line of defense. One, two, three, four, five. We're outnumbered because we're forcing it up a predictable sideline. And this gives them some interesting attacking options. What I love about this is once we win the ball, we can already see his head is starting to come up right here. So he's done a good job of pushing him off, turning, getting the ball, now it's heads up. So if we can continue that and look, what are our immediate attacking options? Great, let's see if we can get people in a counterattack. Now we play the ball forward. Now the question I would have is, did we have to play that in the air? 
Because that's a tough ball when somebody's pushing your back to settle when it's coming at the air. If this ball were to be able to play into this space so we can get it to his feet as he checks into this space, that will be easier for him to control it and then use his strength and explosion to get separation from this back. What this also does is it sets it up to where now we have a flank runner coming up on this side. We can follow it coming up right here with Zach getting the ball in this space. Now our lanes are full. Now we attack with pace and we beat him to spaces to get into the attack. Again here, we do a good job of looking forward fast and seeing what our options are, okay? We're not totally pressured right here. We have one person in a recovery run, and he's not gonna be catching. So we do have the ability to take a touch or two if need be in this situation. We have a player coming up here. We have a player starting to get up into this space. He was called offsides, and what we need to recognize is he was 1v3. So could we utilize those players on the flank who are coming up, then maybe one of these defenders has to step towards them, and Zach could make a curling run into the space, now 1 versus 2 or 1 versus 1, depending on how many defenders step. And that's what we'll look to do a bit more of, rather than play it over the top. Ball comes out, comes back. As you watch this, count the seconds. Look at your watch, look at the clock, figure out. We knew we were getting this two seconds earlier when it came back. See how quickly we build and how much progress we make on this field. It's 4.36 on the clock on that screen right now. So it's 4.57 right now on the clock on the screen. So that was 21 seconds to lose 40 yards of space. That needs to change. When we get the ball in that space, we have to find our options to where we can build forward. And the pace of our pass and building from the back has to be faster. We have to make it so they just can't jog and force us gradually to go back. We need crisp passes with people getting into spaces where we're able to get that going forward. We don't want to give it 40 yards back so he could play a 50-50 yard ball when we had sound possession and clear advantage earlier. Okay, so we win the ball. Look at this. All on a line up the field. Okay. We're trying to get a little bit wide here. Good, let's get a little bit wider. These two players cannot be so close to each other. We need to have somebody right back into this space behind this defensive line, because shame on them for having a Red Rover line set up. And then this other player needs to be over into this space, so now we've separated them as well. With this player stepping back, he will likely step up. He is likely going to go over to him. So now we're 1v1, 1v1. If he drifts into there, what this also does is he pulls him over here. He pulls him over here. So now who's open? 
So we have multiple options from this. It needs to be something we're thinking of immediately when we see we're winning the ball. We need to get into these spaces to move their defense and create the opportunity for ourselves. Still, we're pretty much on a line. How about that? I'm not sure we could do that if I asked you to do it. This has to stop immediately. We are not in support positions here. He doesn't have one option from the four people here because we're all in a line. We need people changing the point of attack and the level on the field, getting into this space, getting into this space, getting wider over here, stepping up into this space so if we play it back, we're not losing 25 yards. We need to get this more feeling of urgency to look to attack. Now that I love, okay? Now they helped us out a bit with some poor defense. We stepped to it really aggressively, which is awesome. We play a feet, we run off, we get a combo play, we get a shot. That's exactly what we need more of. Okay, we need to find those feet with runners coming off the feet to get opportunities right in the middle of the goal. And I like the fact that it's a back who's getting up to take the shot. Can we find different people from different positions who are gonna get up into this space as long as we just balance it when we see they're making those runs? So when we're transitioning to attack, it doesn't matter what position you're in. If a defender has to make this run up and is able to get a quality opportunity like that, brilliant, take it. Someone in the midfield, just recognize who's doing it, make sure we have numbers coverage back here. If they only have one player up and we have four backs, we don't, we don't need to send another player back. Or if we're down to three backs, we don't need to send another person back. We just need to make sure we have numerical superiority. Okay, we do all this work. Now we've run 40 yards with the ball at full speed. We're getting into the attack. Now let's look at our options. One, two, three, four defenders. One, possibly two. Where could we play this ball? Okay, it's 1v1. I'm not sure we're giving him the advantage in that pass. So the runners need to make sure we're getting this option here. If it had gone to the person in the middle, who then runs forward and is a 2v1 there, or we can get it to his feet, that's probably gonna be a bit more dangerous. And with the effort you put in there, we need to get more, more benefit from that. Okay, we win the ball, we play it wide, here's our line, nobody really looking like they're in support, we get it over here, all we ended up doing as a midfield here was just shifting across the field in a line to make sure we crowded the space on this side. We need to be having coordinated movement between you guys to keep this field spread and to allow us to play the whole field when we're transitioning to attack. Now thankfully, we play a great diagonal ball into the space here. We have support moving up. Now, where could we be making runs here and in this space? That's what we need to be thinking. This is a great run, it's pulling a defender out. He can step a little bit higher, so now it's two center backs against whoever wants to challenge them to a duel. If he does cut him back, maybe we can have a numbers up situation.
Again, you'll see this in so many videos. This needs to change. And we need to think of, we're always looking to force it up the line. What are our options in the middle of the field? And if we change this line to the positions I was speaking of before, where we have one who's sighting higher up, one who's balancing it over here, and the three guys in the middle need to think of yourselves like a tilted triangle. You are not on the same line across or forward on the field. We always have to be at an angle from each other. Just got to show the good stuff when it happens. We win it. Can we find feet? Look at this space we have. Okay, on the dribble we can attack it, and if we're playing it to here, make sure we're getting it in clear possession of someone, since we have clear possession here, and a 50% chance up here isn't better than clear possession into this space right here. Let's give ourselves, if that's turning into that situation, if we hold it a bit more, drift into the middle with the dribble to pull their defense and keep them moving, that gives the flank players time to get up. That gives this flank player time to get up. Now we can attack with at least four or five guys as opposed to one versus three. In our last clip, these are all our attacking options. This would be the halfway line from left to right. Please, please play someone into this space. Okay, so as you can see, the main things from this, we need to be looking to change the point of attack. We need our central midfielders never to be on the same line vertically or horizontally from each other. And we need to look to play to feet more and trying to make sure that we're not playing into numbers down situations. Okay, if we start thinking these consistently, we can work things out and we will find ourselves in much better positions in the attack, but also with possession much more often.